morning and every good morning everyone. I'm Vasily Varlamos. Another sunny day ahead as high temperatures keep on warming up, but don't expect these warm temperatures to last. I'll let you know when our pattern will change coming up. Good morning. I'm Sarah Jacobson. Coming up this morning, Hurricane Lee expected to make landfall soon, where experts say it'll do the most damage. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. You're looking live at Indian Creek Plaza in Caldwell on this Friday morning. We're kicking off September 15th, 2023. Vasily will have your weather in just a bit. But first, new this morning, members of the United Auto Workers Union, they've gone on strike after no deal was reached with Detroit's big three automakers. About 13,000 workers have started picketing at three factories, a GM plant in Missouri, a Ford factory in Michigan, and a Stellantis plant in Ohio. The union says more of its roughly 146,000 members could also walk off the job as strikes continue. The UAW president, Sean Fain, saying the union is ready to strike for as long as it takes to get that fair deal. It's the first time in the union's 88-year history it's walked out on all three companies at once. And the Dominican Republic closing all borders with Haiti. That starts today. The decision coming during a conflict over canal construction in a river that starts in the DR and then borders Haiti. The president of the Dominican Republic already ordering the main border crossing with Haiti to be closed off and for visas to be suspended for Haitians. Officials with the DR say they'll try to resolve the dispute with Haiti. And an arm of the United Nations, they say 783 million people are right now facing a global hunger crisis. The World Food Program says about 1 in 10 of the world's population goes to bed hungry every single night. The WFP's director, Cindy McCain, saying the agency it's had to cut food rations for millions due to lack of funding. Meanwhile, the demand for food keeps on going up. Officials with the program say more people are suffering due to the conflict, economic shock, climate extremes, and high fertilizer prices. Well, a federal grand jury charging Hunter Biden with three felony firearm counts in a case brought by the Justice Department. It comes nearly two months after his plea deal broke down. The president's son accused of lying about his drug use on a federal gun form and to a firearm dealer. That's when he bought a revolver back in 2018. A third count claims he knowingly possessed a firearm while on drugs. These are all charges that carry fairly significant potential jail terms. The maximum sentence would be 25 years for the gun charges. Nonviolent offenders who commit no other crime using a weapon most often they don't receive lengthy prison time. Well, Hunter Biden's attorney responding to those gun charges, he says nothing has changed since the deal was made years ago. This event happened in 2018. Law enforcement showed up at the time. They had the paperwork at the time, and no one thought that there was a serious enough event to charge him then. Earlier this summer, it appeared the gun purchase issue was nearly resolved. Hunter Biden went to federal court planning for a plea deal where he would plead guilty to two federal tax misdemeanors and the gun charge would then be dropped in two years if he passed regular drug tests and avoided legal trouble. And it comes as House Republicans are trying to tie president, the president to his son's business dealings as part of their impeachment inquiry into the president. I'm excited we have an impeachment inquiry and I want this to take a long time. Republicans say the charges are a very small start. Now they're demanding the president's son be issued a subpoena as part of their investigation into his business dealings. Well, meantime, many Democrats pointing out that the three charges against Hunter Biden pale in comparison to the 91 charges against former President Trump. The reality is, as I as a Democrat am saying, that if Hunter Biden, the president's son, committed crimes, he should be held accountable for them. Former President Trump and 16 co-defendants, they'll be tried separately from two defendants who requested speedy trials. They're charged with racketeering. Prosecutors say the group carried out an illegal scheme to overturn the 2020 presidential election results. Well, the suspect stole a boat from Portland in fire rescue and then commandeered it down the Columbia River. The suspect sailed about 40 miles to Kalama, Washington. That's where he abandoned the boat to make a run for it. But a neighbor tuning into our sister station in Portland spotted that stolen boat out his front window. 
We've seen plenty of boats stuck on the sandbars out here, but never anything that's a stolen fireboat. For Warner, he called it in. Shortly after that, the suspect was quickly arrested. Fire officials say he snuck under the garage doors of a boathouse, got open the door open of a boat, and took it for a ride. The stolen boat's propeller and depth finder now damaged and will need to be replaced. Well, here at home, Caldwell police need your help. Take a good look at your screen. They want to know the, who these two men are. They're wanted for some burglaries that happened back on Monday. So if you know them or think they look familiar or know about the crime, call either Crime Stoppers or Canyon County Dispatch. And in November, Ada County voters, they'll get the chance to choose to expand the jail or not. Commissioners unanimously approving the bond to go to the ballot last night. The total cost of the bond, $49 million. That comes out to $13 for every hundred thousands of taxable assessed value each year. Now, since the last expansion, the population has grown by a third and the jail has about 100 beds open on average. And in Caldwell, to help keep kids from ending up in jail, the Youth Resource and Opportunity Collaborative, or Youth Rock, now open. It's for kids 10 to 17 and their trusted adults in their lives. Youth Rock's goal is to prevent early intervention services, help kids find jobs and stay out of crisis, among others. Thanks to the $1.5 million grant from the Idaho Department of Juvenile Corrections, the program is completely free. You can go to youthrockidaho.org or our website to learn more. And looking ahead to next Saturday, the 23rd, the family of a missing woman for 29 years now will start a search in the area of Boise for clues or her body, and you can show up to even help. Now, Kristen Dunlap hasn't been seen since 1994. Her mother last saw her October 6th. Friends say they were also in contact with her back in December. She was 17. Well, now she'd be 46. She was a, just a really genuine person, very nice, uh, smart, very smart, very funny. Um, happy to happy go lucky great to be around and always up for an adventure and be silly and goof off and and just a really good down to earth type of person. This is still an open case. Police think someone know what happened to Kristen. So if you need to reach out to Crime Stoppers, you can remain anonymous. There is a thousand dollar reward. Parts of New England and Canada preparing. Oh, pardon me. Let's switch gears. We have more information on that search again next Saturday on our website. Well, happening today, if you have old paint or cell phones to get rid of, Pickles Butte Landfill hosting a free hazardous waste disposal event. It's happening in the parking lot of the Nampa Ford Idaho Center. It's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. They're also collecting cleaning products, outdoor pesticides, computers, and household batteries. It's free if you live in Canyon County. And there's a fun event happening today in Boise. People across the city temporarily turning curbside parking spots into small public parks. Yeah, it's all for National Park King Day. City staff will be located on the south side of Bannock Street in Boise. There'll be snacks, games, and information about city projects. It starts at 10 a.m. and runs till 2. And today marks the start of the 6th National Adoption Weekend. If you're looking to add a furry friend to your family, Simply Cats offering a deal starting today. It's buy one, get one on kitten adoption fees, a partnership with Best Friend Animal Society covering the extra cash. Simply Cats hoping to make more space for cats by adopting some out. They are a no-kill shelter and they're full at the moment. If you want to schedule an appointment, just head to our website. Well, folks, it's set to be a beautiful day here in the Treasure Valley. We're looking at clear skies pretty much all day today. Now, temperatures are going to be in the low 60s around 9 a.m. We'll jump up into the low 70s around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 87 degrees in Boise. Expected to arrive at around 5 p.m. And if you're heading out the door right now here in Boise, we're sitting at 58 degrees, but we're sitting at in the low 50s right now over in Nampa Mountain Home and over in Ontario. And then over in Caldwell right now, they're sitting at just 49 degrees this morning, so it is quite chilly out there right now. We are going to see this sunshine sticking around through the weekend. Expect a slow warming trend as well and high temperatures are in the upper 80s. Today we're going to jump up into the 90s on both Saturday and Sunday, but don't expect these warm temperatures to last very long. We're going to be much cooler next week as we see multiple low pressure systems bring some cooler air from the Gulf of Alaska and that'll drop set temperatures significantly next week. We'll see below average temperatures all around the West Coast and here in the Treasure Valley. We may also see some precipitation later next week as well. That precipitation likely going to come on Wednesday night 
tonight and into Thursday morning. Then after that, we should see that precipitation fade off. But as for the rest of the morning, temperatures are right now sitting at 58 degrees. We'll likely stay at 58 degrees both at 6 and 7 a.m. for dropping down to 56 degrees at 8 a.m. That's looking like our low today is 56 degrees. 87 degrees going to be the high here in Boise today. 87 also looking like the high over in Mountain Home. And 86 going to be the high over in Caldwell and Nampa. 88 looking like the high over in Emmett. And 87 also going to be the high over in Ontario. Then moving up to the mountains, 82 in Idaho City. 75 going to be the high in Sun Valley. And 76 looking like the high in McCall. We'll jump up to 90 degrees both tomorrow and on Sunday here in Boise. But then those temperatures will drop down into the upper 80s on Monday. We'll keep on dropping. We'll actually drop below average on Tuesday. And we'll keep on cooling as we head through Wednesday and Thursday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. Well, on and off ramps at the I-84 Simcoe Road interchange near Mountain Home, closing down for an entire month. Now your detour will take the nearest interchange to the west. That's at exit 71 to get on the freeway. The eastbound on and off ramps at exit 74 will stay open. Rebuilding the bridge. Rebuilding the bridge. It was built back in 1959. That started back in July. While well, reconstruction happens, one lane will be open so motorists can cross the freeway. It's expected to all be done by next summer. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, auto workers on strike. A look at the demonstrations already underway as they fail to reach a deal with automakers. Plus, Americans still unhappy with how much everything costs. The data that seems to suggest the economy is improving. And hey, it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Now, studies have discovered that older people are much better than younger people when it comes to doing this. The answer is keeping a secret. All right, now for today's question. A third of husbands don't remember this, but more than 60 or 80 percent of wives do. All right, folks, what do you think it is? is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 513 on your Friday. Welcome back. United Auto Workers on strike. No deal reached overnight with Detroit's big three, Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis. Auto workers asking for a four-day work week, a 40% increase in pay. And is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 515 on your Friday. Welcome back. United Auto Workers are on strike this morning. No deal reached overnight with Detroit's big three, Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis. We are the union. We are the union. Auto workers asking for a four-day work week, a 40% pay increase, and more. The strike starting at three factories. A GM in Missouri, a Ford in Michigan, and a Stellantis in Ohio. And the union saying more of its roughly 146,000 members could also walk off the job as the strike continues. These companies got to come to the pump for, the, for their workers. They want to call them family when it's, when, it's, when, it's, when it's easy. But you know what? The proof's in the pudding. And you know what? They haven't been there. They haven't taken care of their workers. The union will be holding a mass rally in downtown Detroit later today. A simultaneous strike never happening before, but it's been brewing since the 2008 recession when union workers agreed to major concessions in their contract to help keep the companies from filing for bankruptcy. Well, hey, according to the Associated Press, Ford and GM, they've offered a 20% pay increase. Stellantis offering a 17.5% increase. But Ford CEO saying a four day work week not sustainable for his company. And if we had done that in our business when we've had a couple of really great years here, we would have gone bankrupt many years ago. Ford adding its average annual pay, including overtime and bonuses, was $78,000 as of last year. Well, contract talks that could end the Hollywood writer strike set to resume next week. The Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, which represents the industry's studios, streaming services, and production companies in union negotiations, says they're reaching out to the Writers Guild of America. The two sides agreeing to resume those negotiations again next week. Well, meantime, President Biden is in Maryland talking about the economy and promoting his Bidenomics agenda. While the job market is holding strong, inflation is lower than it was a year ago. 
Polls, though, show the American people aren't feeling it. Spending is strong and unemployment is low at 3.8 percent, but two thirds of adults rate the economy as bad. According to a new CBS poll, the data puzzling some economists. Levels that we would normally associate with recessions, not with a three and a half or four percent unemployment rate. So so we know that there, there's something odd in the way the data is coming out. One explanation could be a drop in median home income. New census data showing 2022, it marked a third straight year of decline, down 2.3 percent, about $1,700 when adjusted for inflation. And it comes as threats of government shutdown back in full force once again. Now some sort of deal not made by the end of this month, the government will have to close its doors. The White House wanting Congress to pass a short term measure while well, negotiations are continuing. But the GOP doesn't seem inclined to do that. Let's get through this budget debate. Let's get through the spending uh, the shutdown, which is going to happen, and then we'll see. The White House says Congress should move forward with the bipartisan agreement voted on and approved earlier on this year. A deal is a deal. They should keep their word and they should keep the government open. A government shutdown would start October 1st if a new bill isn't passed. And the IRS won't be accepting any claims for the pandemic era tax credits until 2024 due to rising concerns of fraud. The agency says the employee retention credit, it was to help small businesses pay their employees during the height of the pandemic. The program has long been a target for fraudsters offering businesses help to apply for the ERC for a fee, even if it wasn't clear that they qualified. More than 3 million claims have been received. Thousands of ERC claims have been referred for an audit and criminal charges have been filed in hundreds of cases. The program ending back in October of 2021. Well, hey, take a look at this. What Americans can double up on one of their favorite foods today because it's National Double Cheeseburger Day. While the hamburger sandwich first appeared in the 19th or early 20th century, there's actually a dispute over where that happened. There's no doubt the burger has become a culinary icon in the U.S. over the last, well, forever. But over the years, burgers have gotten bigger with essentials added on with ingredients like cheese and even bacon. Yeah, did you hear that? Yeah. That was my uh, stomach growling this morning <laughs> looking at those cheeseburgers. That looks real good right now. I could mm -hmm. go with one with a little egg on top, you know, make it a breakfast oh, yeah. burger for the morning. But double definitely. cheeseburger definitely coming my way later. Tonight. Oh, yeah. No, that sounds very good mm -hmm. this morning. And you guys are going to love this forecast mm -hmm. you're going to see over the weekend. Oh, it's going to be picture perfect out there. Perfect for a barbecue if you want to grill up your own burgers. But we're looking at clear skies this morning. We're continue, we'll continue to see those clear skies throughout the day today. And we're not only seeing those clear skies here in the Treasure Valley, all around the Gem State right now. We're Looking at clear skies as that high pressure continues to move into the region. Now this high pressure is set to stick around through the weekend. And as a result, we're going to see those high temperatures jumping up into the 90s, both on Saturday and on Sunday. Now we are going to see these clear skies not only for the rest of the day today, but likely throughout the day tomorrow. We'll see little to no cloud cover all around the gem state and tomorrow as well. We'll likely see little to no cloud cover. We may see some light clouds in the Owyhees as we head to the afternoon, but in general skies are going to stay clear and we got a game out on the blue tomorrow they are playing the North Dakota Fighting Hawks and temperatures at game time around 10 a.m. are going to be right around 67 degrees so you may need a jacket for the first and second quarter but as we head throughout the day it should start to warm up leading to a high tomorrow of 90 degrees we'll see a high at 90 degrees on Sunday as well then as we head into Monday we are going to see a pattern change we'll see multiple low pressure systems move through the region that'll bring some partly cloudy skies on Monday and Tuesday temperatures will drop down to 87 degrees on Monday and we'll drop all the way down to 79 degrees on Tuesday. That's just a degree below average for this time of year, but we'll keep on dropping in terms of temperatures. We'll drop down to 72 degrees on Wednesday and all the way down to 69 degrees on Thursday. That's about 11 degrees below average for this time of year. Those low temperatures also going to drop down into the mid 40s. So we got some chilly mornings coming to us next week as well. Meanwhile, over the mountains, they'll continue to see that sunshine through the weekend. They'll see highs in the upper 70s on both Saturday and Sunday, but they'll see those highs drop down into the low 70s on Monday as they see some partly cloudy skies. They're they're expecting partly cloudy skies for the rest of the week over in the mountains. They'll see those high temperatures dropping down into the mid 60s on Tuesday. They'll drop down to 58 degrees on Wednesday and those high temperatures may drop down into the mid 50s on Thursday. That low temperature on Thursday morning also going to be right around freezing over in the mountains. Oh, Burr, thank you, Vasily. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, some finally heading back home to Maui. 
taking a look at what's left when families will officially be allowed to re-enter. Plus, planting trees and trying to cool down cities. How much is being spent to make it happen? Is CBS 2 News this morning? It's 525 on your Friday. Welcome back. Hurricane Lee now a Category 1 storm as it approaches New England. The National Hurricane Center says Lee expected to make landfall this weekend in Maine or in the Canadian province of Nova Scotia. Tropical storm warnings, they're in effect for a wide stretch of the New England coast. And Lee prompting a hurricane watch to be issued in Maine for the first time since 2008. And for the first time since early August, residents of Maui will be allowed to return to the fire ravaged areas in Lahaina starting September 25th. County officials will begin escorting people to their properties, helping them look for lost heirlooms. But they stress that the timeline, it's fluid, so things could easily change. The island's emergency management administration outlining that reentry plan, emphasizing the potential health risks when sifting through the ash. We don't want people stirring it up, making it airborne, possibly exposing themselves to risk, but others in close proximity. So we'll be giving them guidance on how best to, as the EPA calls it, very gently moving through with a very gentle touch and removing what you need to remove to then look for those heirlooms or special things that you'd like to have. The EPA is currently working to remove hazardous materials from that area. At least 115 people died in that fire, and more than 2,000 buildings were destroyed, most of which were homes. Well, the Department of Agriculture, they'll contribute a billion dollars to planting trees in cities nationwide. The department announcing the funding for marginalized areas across all 50 states. It's coming from the Inflation Reduction Act. The grants meant to help reduce extreme heat, benefit health, and improve access to nature, as well as make communities more livable. Separately, the USDA's Forest Service distributed over $200 million to states and territories benefiting urban tree canopies. And still to come on CBS 2 News, Ukraine says they're making progress in their counteroffensive. We have the latest. And don't forget about our question of the day. Here it is for you. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. Is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 5.30 on your Friday. Welcome back. President Biden's son, Hunter, he's been indicted on three gun charges. If convicted, he faces up to 10 years behind bars. Our national correspondent, Christine Frizzell, brings us up to speed. The charges stem from Hunter Biden's purchase of a firearm in October of 2018 and lying on the application about his drug use at the time. They come less than two months after he was set to plead guilty to two misdemeanor tax charges and enter into a pretrial diversion agreement to avoid prosecution on the felony gun charge. Now it's clear he won't avoid it. Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer calling the charges a very small start. Ironically, that's the one crime that he committed that you cannot tie Joe Biden to. Federal prosecutor, now special counsel David Weiss, brought the charges following Republican criticism of his new role. The indictment comes as Republicans in Congress are demanding the president's son be issued a subpoena as part of their investigation into his business dealings, a probe that this week led Speaker Kevin McCarthy to the decision to launch an impeachment inquiry into President Biden for his alleged role in those business dealings. Biden used his official office to coordinate with Hunter Biden's business partners about Hunter's role in Burisma, a Ukrainian energy company. Questions about business and finances, not part of this indictment, but central to the investigation in the House. We're following $20 million of money that flowed into shell companies created by Hunter Biden uh, and currently we don't have the data of where that money got spent. Hunter Biden's attorney Abby Lowell responded to the indictment saying prosecutors filed charges today that they deemed were not warranted just six weeks ago following a five year investigation into this case, criticizing quote MAGA Republicans improper and partisan interference in this process. Many Democrats pointing out the three charges against Hunter Biden pale in comparison to the 91 charges former President Trump is facing. In Washington, I'm Christine Frizzau. 
And the White House pushing back against that impeachment inquiry by encouraging media to be tough on impeachment claims. Now, White House spokesperson writing that it's time for the media to ramp up its scrutiny of House Republicans for opening an impeachment inquiry based on lies. Now, some worry that letter may be aimed at affecting news coverage. This is the preview of working the refs, okay? And also, here's the thing. A memo like this should not necessarily have to come out because this, as a PR person, this is your job. Just last week, in a separate controversy, a court ruled the White House likely violated the First Amendment for trying to influence which posts about coronavirus social media companies should censor. Well, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky expected to meet with President Biden during the United Nations Assembly next week. Zelensky's visit comes as Congress is debating providing more funding in military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine in its war against Russia. Biden sought a package of $13 billion in military aid and $8 billion in humanitarian support. Conservative lawmakers, they've been pushing for spending cuts and are looking to cut off funding from Ukraine in some cases. Zelensky last traveling to U.S. back in December and addressing a joint session of Congress. It was his first time leaving Ukraine since the Russian invasion. And Ukraine says it's captured another village in its ongoing counteroffensive. Ukrainian officials say Friday, or today rather, vil the village it reclaimed about six miles south of the Russian-occupied city of Bakhmut. Bakhmut has been the longest battle in Russia's ongoing invasion. Ukraine launching its counteroffensive more than three months ago. Authorities say Ukraine, they've regained around 14, pardon me, 19 square miles of land around Bakhmut since it started. Well, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un continuing his visit to Russia this morning. North Korean state media says Kim toured a Russian manufacturing plant that builds and develops warplanes. Images released showing Kim looking at the inside of a fighter jet. Kim reportedly set to travel to see Russia's Pacific Ocean Fleet and other facilities next. It's the North Korean leader's first foreign trip since 2019. And the U.S. slaps another round of sanctions on more than 150 businesses and people helping Russia maintain its war in Ukraine. It's one of the biggest sanction packages by state and treasury departments. They're meant to crack down on workarounds that have allowed Russia to access both technology and money. The sanctions also target Russia's energy sector and its ability to develop more natural gas and mining projects. We have not wanted to, to take Russian oil off the market because of the impact that that could have on energy prices worldwide and the impact it would have energy, on energy prices uh, for American consumers. We have taken steps to ensure that while the Russian oil remains available, the price that they're receiving for it and the profits that they receive for it are greatly diminished. Russia expelled two U.S. diplomats yesterday. The State Department say they were simply doing their jobs. The U.S. vowing to respond to these actions swiftly, but wouldn't preview any countermeasures. Well, a suspect stole a Portland fire and rescue boat and commandeered it down the Columbia River. The suspect sailed it around 40 miles down to the Kalama, Washington. That's where he abandoned the boat to make a run for it. Now, tuning into our Sinclair sister station, a neighbor in Portland actually spotted that stolen boat out front his window. We've seen plenty of boats stuck on the sandbars out here, but never anything that's a stolen fireboat. Mike Warner called it in, and shortly after that, the suspect was quickly arrested. Fire officials say he snuck under the garage door of the boathouse, got open the doors of the boat, and took it for a joyride. The stolen boat's propeller and their depth finder are damaged and will need to be replaced. All right, well, here at home, Caldwell Police need your help. They want these two men for some car burglaries they say happened back on Monday. Take a good look at your screen. Now, if you know them, think they look familiar or know anything about the crime, call either Crime Stoppers or Canyon County Dispatch. Well, in November, Ada County voters will get to choose to expand the jail or not. Commissioners unanimously approving the bond to go on the ballot yesterday. The total cost of the bond, $49 million. It comes out to 13 bucks for every $100,000 in taxable assessed value each year. Since the last expansion, the population has grown by a third. The jail says it only has 100 beds open on average. 
and in Caldwell to help keep kids from ending up in jail. The Youth Resource and Opportunity Collaborative known as Youth Rock is now open. It's for kids 10 to 17 and their trusted adults. Youth Rock's goals are prevention and early intervention services, helping kids find jobs and stay out of crisis, avoiding law enforcement involvement, building strong emotional foundations for a successful future, and thanks to the $1.5 million grant from the Idaho Department of Juvenile Corrections, the program is free. You can go to youthrockidaho.org or our website to learn more. And looking ahead to next Saturday, that's the 23rd, the family of a woman missing for 29 years now, they'll search an area of Boise and you can show up to help. Now, Kristen Dunlap hasn't been seen since 1994. Her mother last seeing her that October 6th. Friends say they were in contact until December. She was 17. She'd now be 46. This upcoming search will cover an area near where Boise Police cold case detectives searched twice in 2022. That's up near Pleasant Valley Road. Not finding any remains. There's no new information since the search, but BPD, they want to support Kristen's family and they hope you do too by helping in the search. Police first considering Kristen a runaway, then in 1998 missing, then in 2021 likely dead. Detectives think someone is responsible for her death. Here's her half brother describing her to CBS2 at a vigil in January of last year. She was a, just a really genuine person, very nice, uh, smart, very smart, very funny, um, happy to, happy go lucky, great to be around and always up for an adventure and be silly and goof off and, and just a really good down to earth type of person. This is still an open case. Please think someone know what happened to Kristen. So if you if that's you reach out to Crime Stoppers, you can remain anonymous and there is a thousand dollar reward. Well, folks, switching gears, it's set to be a sunny day here in the Treasure Valley. Temperatures this morning, a little bit chilly. We're going to see those temperatures around the low 60s around 9 a.m. We'll jump into the low 70s around 11 o'clock, leading to a high today of 87 degrees in Boise. Expected to arrive at around 5 p.m. Taking a look at temperatures right now while we're sitting at 58 degrees here in Boise. We're sitting in the low 50s over in Mountain Home, Nampa, and Ontario right now. And Caldwell sitting at a chilly 49 degrees this morning. Now, over the next couple of days, you can expect a slow warming trend. Temperatures already in the upper range. 80s today after being in the mid 80s yesterday and we're going to jump up into the 90s on both Saturday and Sunday. Expect these sunny skies to stick around through the weekend, but we're going to get much cooler next week. We'll see multiple low pressure systems moving to the region, bringing some cooler air from the Gulf of Alaska, and that's going to cool down temperatures all around the or all around the West Coast. We are going to see below average temperatures, and we're also going to see some precipitation moving into the region as well. We'll stay dry through Tuesday morning, but then by Wednesday night into Thursday morning, we are going to see some showers here in the Treasure Valley. No showers hours could last in the Thursday night as well. But as for this morning, we should see some clear skies. Temperature is going to be around 58 degrees at both 6 and 7 a.m. And then we'll drop down to 56 degrees around 8 a.m., leading to our high today of 87 degrees in Boise. 87 also going to be the high over in Mountain Home and 86 looking like the high in Nampa and over in Caldwell. 88 going to be the high over in Emmett and 87 looking like the high in Ontario. Then moving up to the mountains, 82 going to be the high in Idaho City. 75 looking like the high in Sun Valley and 76 going to be the high in McCall. Now those high Temperature is going to jump up to 90 degrees both tomorrow and on Sunday. We'll drop back down into the upper 80s on Monday before dropping all the way down below average on Tuesday. Temperatures will keep on dropping on Wednesday and Thursday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. It's time for our question of the day. The question, a third of husbands don't remember this, but more than 80% of wives do. Ooh, um, I know. <laughs> I don't really... I don't really know if I have like a great answer yet. Okay. I might hold on to this one. What do you think? Um, I think it might be their, well, wedding anniversary, maybe not. See, but like that's what I was thinking, but maybe I feel like more people, more husbands will remember that. What I about first kiss? Ooh, okay. I or like that. First, first date? date? Yeah, I like that too. Okay. I'll be honest, I don't think I remember any of those. <laughs> uh, I'm in the one. 20%. Yeah. All right, let's see what <laughs> folks at home have to say. Jen says your anniversary. Yeah, I mean, that's a great guess, Jen. For Definitely sure. could be that. All right, Doug. Oh, says the first kiss. First kiss, okay. Okay, like we're that. on the right track. Feeling good about that. Kelly <laughs> says turning off the coffee pot. <laughs> that's a great one, Kelly. This is great. All right, folks, if you think you know the answer, you have an hour and 15 minutes to get those guesses in. You can do that by heading to our Facebook page or our Twitter, Guess on the Question of the Day post. We'll read more of your guesses and reveal the answer at the end of the show. That's right before CBS This Morning.
And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, some new technology may help give you a lift without the need for surgery. Is CBS 2 News this morning. It's National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, and adults with disabilities, they're three times more likely to consider suicide than people without disabilities. That's the latest data from the CDC. Now, Dr. Lauren Kazem says the disability community is bigger than most people think, according, accounting for about a quarter of the U.S. population. Most research efforts are focused on finding cures or preventing disabilities from happening. But Kazem says there are needs to be focused on suicide as well because of perceived burdensomeness. This idea that um, if I were to die, it would benefit other people more than if I were to continue living. And we find that this is consistently heightened among people with disabilities um, across diff dis different disability types, um, you know, younger adults, um, older adults. It, you know, it really doesn't matter. We're finding that is a consistent trend there. Just heartbreaking. Dr. Kazem, she's been testing cognitive behavioral therapy for suicide prevention using telehealth, so it can be provided to anyone, anywhere, at any time. She says making communities more accessible, it would help remove some parts of those disparities that keep people with disabilities from being able to freely enjoy where they live and maintain their independence. And the University of Idaho is focusing on suicide prevention all week long. Tomorrow, there's a 2K and 5K walk or run for suicide awareness. It begins at 10 a.m. at the Student Rec Center. And we want to remind you that there is always help. If you or someone you know is hurting, please reach out. You can call or text 988 for help. Well, switching gears, new technology is now on the market that could help make you look younger. As medical reporter Liz Bonus explains, it sort of exercises your skin. Hey there, everybody. It's the newest technology to lift your face without surgery. After just a few treatments of this exercise for your face, your skin can go from this to this. It kind of looks like a bunch of pads strapped to your face. Chris, our patient, is hooked up to what's called the M-Face system. You'll see her face involuntarily twitch here. Facial plastic surgeon Dr. John Mendelson says it uses high-intensity focused electromagnetic energy to help stimulate the muscles of the face for a lifting result. It also uses synchronized radio frequency to give results that look like this after several treatments with improved skin and texture to reduced wrinkles. What it's doing is it's stimulating the, her facial muscles to lift and tighten. And it's also warming the tissue. The radio frequency heats up the tissue a little bit. It feels like it is uh, tickling you from the inside. It's a very weird sensation. It's a 20 minute treatment and uh, there are four of them. It's usually done uh, every week uh, for a series of four treatments. So what does that feel like? Can you ask her? Kind of like something crawling across your face. So it's more of just kind of like a twitching. Now, company research says the results last about a year, but you may want to touch up about six months out. Cost about $750 a treatment, and in most cases, it is not covered by your medical insurance plan. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Back to you. We'll take a look at this. A new study in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Planets, found a spacecraft that was left by the U.S. on the moon surface back in 1972. It could be causing moonquakes. The Apollo 17 lunar lander module, sitting a few hundred yards away from instruments, recording those small tremors. The analysis offering new insight into how the moon responds to its surroundings and what can affect its seismic activities. The rumbles not dangerous and likely undetected to humans standing on the moon's surface. And hey, if there are any aliens flying through Earth's airspace, NASA says they want to know. The space agency's UAP study team releasing its first report yesterday. They say they're working to try and identify UFOs. The top takeaway from the study is that there is a lot more to learn. The NASA independent study team did not find any evidence that UAP have an extraterrestrial origin. But we don't know what these UAP are. UAP stands for Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena, the modern term for UFO. 
NASA wants to ramp up its research into what these flying objects are, so it's appointing a new director just for that. But the agency not identifying the individual. NASA says officials studying the topic, they've been harassed, even threatened, accused of covering up evidence. Still, the report directing the agency to leverage its satellites and artificial intelligence to try to identify the flying phenomena. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Ooh, I feel like we need music after that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, some it's... little spooky music, you know, coming <laughs> on. That'd be, that'd be pretty nice. All right. Well, speaking of spooky music, mm -hmm. uh, it's crazy to think that we're only halfway through September. Mm -hmm. uh, that spooky music for Halloween, yeah, Halloween is going to be up. playing soon. <laughs> yeah, Halloween coming up. And we're not feeling anything like fall right no. now. It's looking like lots of sunshine today. High temperature is going to be in the upper 80s, and we may even jump into the 90s this weekend as well. And right now, we're seeing some clear skies over Boise this morning, all around the Treasure, Treasure Valley, we're seeing those clear skies, and it's all thanks to high pressure that's moving over the Gem State and continuing to build over the last couple of days. We've started to see that slide into the region. Now we're seeing that high pressure really settled in, and high temperatures are going to warm up as a result. We'll see those high temperatures warming up into the 90s both on Saturday and on Sunday this weekend. And folks, we'll be seeing sunshine throughout the day today. Little to no cloud cover expected both here in the Treasure Valley and all around the Gem State. Now, as we head into tomorrow, we're expecting those clear skies to stick around over in the Owyhee. They may see some light cloud cover in the afternoon, but in general, we're going to see those clear skies as we head into Sunday. We may see some light clouds on Sunday, but on Saturday, we got a Boise State game. Another game. It's the second game out on the blue. They're playing the North Dakota Fighting Hawks, and that game is an early start right at 10 a.m. Temperature is going to be at 67 degrees, so you may want to bring a jacket, but conditions will start to warm up as the game goes, and we are going to see a high of 90 degrees tomorrow. We'll see a high of 90 degrees on Sunday as well. Expect that sunshine to stick around through the weekend, but as we head into Monday is where we'll start to see those partly cloudy skies roll in. We'll see partly cloudy skies on both Monday and on Tuesday. Those high temperatures are going to drop down to 87 degrees on Monday, and then we'll drop below average on Tuesday. However, temperatures are going to keep on dropping as we head throughout next week. We'll see a high of 72 degrees on Wednesday, and those low temperatures are going to drop into the mid 40s on Thursday morning as we see a high of 69 degrees on Thursday. That's about 11 degrees below average for this time of year. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, their high temperature is going to jump up into the upper 70s on both Saturday and Sunday. You'll see that sunshine through the weekend as well. But then expect partly cloudy skies for most of the next week. High temperature is going to drop down to the low 70s on Monday, and they'll drop all the way down into the mid 60s on Tuesday. They'll keep on dropping as they head into Wednesday and Thursday. We'll see a high of 58 on Wednesday and 56 going to be the high on Thursday, and that low temperature on Thursday morning going to be right around freezing over in the mountains. Oh, Burr, all right. Thank you, Vasily. Coming up on CBS 2 News, Boise State kicking off their next home game tomorrow. A look at what to expect as they try to avoid going 0-3. Is CBS 2 News this morning. Well, happening today, if you have old paint or cell phones to get rid of, Pickles Butte Landfill hosting a free hazardous waste disposal event. It's happening in the parking lot of the Ford uh, Napa Ford Idaho Center. It's from 10 a.m. to 4. They'll also accept cleaning products, indoor pesticides, computers, and household batteries. It's free if you live in Canyon County. And there's a fun event happening here in Boise today. People across the city temporarily turning curbside parking spots into small public parks. It's all for National Parking Day. City staff located on the south side of Bannock Street in front of Cup Bop. There'll be snacks, games, and information about city projects. The fun kicks off at 10 a.m. It goes till 2. And today marks the start of the 6th National Adoption Weekend. And if you're looking to add one or more furry family members, Simply Cats offering a deal. Now starting today, it's buy one, get one on kitten adoption fees. A partnership with Best Friends Animal Society covering the extra. Simply Cats hoping to make space for more cats by adopting some out. The No Kill Shelter is full. They only do appointments. So go to our website for an application and a schedule to meet up. We'll kick off at Albertson Stadium tomorrow. The Broncos have an 0-2 record so far this season. So going into game day, here's what you need to know. Vendors will be up bright and early. There's tailgating before the sun comes up. Kickoff is at 10 a.m. Boise State asking fans to wear throwback white gear. So if you have any, make sure to bring it out this Saturday. The team revealing its uniforms today blue jerseys with white pants. 
And also happening tomorrow, $596 million up for grabs. That's the current price for the Powerball. After its latest drawing went without a winner, the one-time cash payout option would be around $288 million. Not too bad. If you want to buy a ticket, you want to do so before the next drawing. That's set for Saturday night. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, Hunter Biden indicted the charges he's facing again. Plus, a fireboat in Oregon taken for a joyride. How the suspect pirate was captured. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com. We have your latest headlines and facility has your weather at the top of the hours. Stay close. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. Everyone, I'm Vasily Varlamos. Another sunny day ahead as high temperatures keep on warming up. But don't expect these temperatures to last for long. I'll let you know when our pattern will change coming up. Good morning, I'm Sarah Jacobson. Coming up this morning, Hurricane Lee expected to make landfall soon, where experts say it'll do the most damage. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. You're looking at Indian Creek Plaza on this Friday morning. We're kicking off September 15th, 2023. Vasily will have your weather in just a bit. But first, new this morning, members of the United Auto Workers Union, they've gone on strike after no deal was reached with Detroit's big three automakers. About 13,000 workers have started picketing at three factories this morning. A GM plant in Missouri, a Ford factory in Michigan, and a Stellantis plant in Ohio. The union says more of its roughly 146,000 members could walk off the job as the strike continues. The UAW president, Sean Fain, saying the union is ready to strike as long as it gets a fair deal. This is the first time in the union's 88-year history it walked out on all three companies at once. And the Dominican Republic is closing its borders with Haiti starting today. The decision coming during a conflict over canal construction in a river that starts in the DR and borders Haiti. The president of the Dominican Republic already ordering the main border crossing with Haiti to be closed off and for visas to be suspended for Haitians. Officials with the DR say they'll try to resolve the dispute with Haiti. And an arm of the United Nations saying 783 million people are facing a global hunger crisis. The World Food Program says that's one in 10 of the world's population who go to bed hungry every night. The WFP director, Cindy McCain, saying the agency has to cut food rations for millions of people due to lack of funding. Meanwhile, the demand for food keeps on going up. Program officials say more people are suffering because of conflict, economic shocks, climate extremes, and high fertilizer prices. Well, a federal grand jury charging Hunter Biden with three felony firearm counts in a case brought by the Justice Department. It comes nearly two months after his plea deal broke down. The president's son accused of lying about his drug use on a federal gun form and to a firearms dealer when he bought a revolver back in 2018. Now a third count claims he knowingly possessed a firearm while on drugs. These are all charges that carry fairly significant potential jail terms. The maximum sentence, it'd be 25 years for those gun charges. Nonviolent offenders who commit no other crime using a weapon most often don't receive lengthy prison time. Well, Hunter Biden's attorney is responding to those gun charges. He says nothing has changed since that deal was made years ago. This event happened in 2018. Law enforcement showed up at the time. They had the paperwork at the time, and no one thought that there was a serious enough event to charge him then. Earlier this summer, it appeared the gun purchase issue was nearly resolved. Hunter Biden went to federal court planning for a plea deal where he would plea guilty to two federal tax misdemeanors and the gun charge would then be dropped in two years 
if Hunter passed regular drug tests and avoided legal trouble. And it comes as House Republicans are trying to tie the president to his son's business dealings. It's or as part of the impeachment inquiry into President Biden. I'm excited we have an impeachment inquiry, and I want this to take a long time. Republicans say the charges are a very small start. Now they're demanding the president's son be issued a subpoena as part of their investigation into his business dealings. Well, meantime, many Democrats pointing out that the three charges against Hunter Biden, they pale in comparison to the 91 charges the former president is facing. The reality is, as I as a Democrat am saying, that if Hunter Biden, the president's son, committed crimes, he should be held accountable for them. Former President Trump and 16 co-defendants, they'll be tried separately from two defendants who requested speedy trials. They're charged with racketeering. Prosecutors say the group carried out an illegal scheme to overturn the 2020 presidential election results. Well, a suspect stole a Portland fire and rescue boat and commandeered it down the Columbia River. Yeah, the suspect sailed 40 miles down to Kalama, Washington. That's where he abandoned the boat to make a run for it. But a neighbor tuning into our Sinclair sister station in Portland spotted that stolen boat out his front window. We've seen plenty of boats stuck on the sandbars out here, but never anything that's a stolen fire boat. Mike Warner called it in. Shortly after that, the suspect was arrested. Fire officials say he snuck under a garage door of a boathouse, got open the door and got the boat open, and then took it out for a joyride. The stolen boat's propeller and depth finder are damaged and will need to be replaced. Well, here at home, Caldwell Police need your help. Take a good look at your screen. They want these two men for some car burglaries that happened back on Monday. If you know them, think they look familiar or know anything about the crime, call either Crime Stoppers or Ada, or pardon me, or Canyon County Dispatch. That number also on your screen. Now, in November, Ada County voters, they'll get to choose to expand the jail or not. Commissioners unanimously approving the bond to go on the ballot last night. The total cost of the bond, $49 million. That's $13 per $100,000 of taxable assessed value each year. Now, since the last expansion, the population's grown about a third. The jail only has about 100 beds open on average. And out in Caldwell, to help keep kids from ending up in jail, the Youth Resource and Opportunity Collaborative, or Youth Rock, is now open. It's for kids 10 to 17 and their trusted adult in their lives. Youth Rock's goals are prevention and early intervention, helping kids find jobs and stay out of crisis, among others, and thanks to the $1.5 million grant from the Idaho Department of Juvenile Corrections, the program is free. You can go to Idaho Rock, or youthrockidaho.org or our website to learn more. And looking ahead to next Saturday, the 23rd, the family of a missing woman for 29 years now, they'll search an area in Boise for clues or her body. And you can show up to help. Now, Kristen Dunlap hasn't been seen since 1994. Her mother last saw her that October 6th. Friends say they were in contact through December. She was 17 at the time. She'd be now 46. The upcoming search covering an area near Boise where police cold case detectives searched twice back in 2022. It was near Pleasant Valley Road. They didn't find any remains. No new information in, in this case since the search. But BPD wants to support Kristen's family and they hope you will too. Police first considering Kristen a runaway, then in 1998 missing, then in 2021 likely dead. Detectives think someone is responsible for her death. Here's her half-brother describing to CBS2 at a vigil in January of last year. She was a, just a really genuine person, very nice, uh, smart, very smart, very funny, um, happy to, happy go lucky, great to be around and always up for an adventure. and be silly and goof off and, and just a really good down to earth type of person. This is still an open case and please think someone know what hap knows what happened. If that's you, reach out to Crime Stoppers. You can remain anonymous and there is a thousand dollar reward. All right, well happening today, if you have old paint or cell phones to get rid of, Pickles Butte Landfill hosting a free hazardous waste disposal event. It's happening at the parking lot of the Napa Ford Idaho Center. It's from 10 a.m. to 4 o'clock today. They're also accepting cleaning products, outdoor and indoor pesticides, computers and household batteries. 
And hey, it's free if you live in Canyon County. And there's also a fun event happening in Boise today. People across the city temporarily turning curbside parking spots into small public parks. Yeah, it's all for National Parking Day. City staff will be located on the south side of Bannock Street in front of Cup Bop. There'll be snacks, games, and information about city projects. The fun starts at 10 a.m. It runs till 2. And today also marking the start of the 6th National Adoption Weekend. So if you're looking to add a furry friend to your family, Simply Cats offering a deal. Starting today, it's buy one, get one on kitten adoption fees. It's a partnership with Best Friends Animal Society. Simply Cats hoping to make more space. The no-kill shelter they say is full and they only do appointments. So go to our website for an application or to schedule a meetup. Well, folks, it's set to be a sunny day here in the Treasure Valley. Temperature is warming up as well. We'll see a high of 87 degrees. We are going to be in the low 60s around 9 a.m., jumping up into the low 70s around 11 o'clock, leading to a high today of 87 degrees. Expected to arrive at around 5 p.m. And if you're heading out the door right now, we're sitting at 59 degrees here in Boise. However, it is chilly around much of the Treasure Valley. We're sitting at 52 degrees over in Nampa, 49. The temperature right now over in Caldwell. And they're sitting at a chilly 46 degrees right now over in Mountain Home. Now, over the next couple of days, you can can expect a slow warming trend. Those high temperatures are going to jump into the 90s both on Saturday and Sunday and expect that sunshine to stick around through the weekend. But we are going to get much cooler next week. We'll see multiple low pressure systems move into the region. That's going to drag cooler air from the Gulf of Alaska into our neck of the woods. And that's going to drop temperatures over the next 8 to 14 days below average, not only for us here in the Treasure Valley, but all around the West Coast. We are going to see below average temperatures. It also may bring us some precipitation as well. We'll stay dry through Tuesday, but then on Wednesday night and into Thursday morning, we we may see some scattered showers around the Treasure Valley, but as for this morning, we're going to see some clear skies. Temperatures are going to stay in the upper 50s till about 7 o'clock, and then we'll drop to our low of 56 degrees around 8 a.m. Then we'll jump to our high today of 87 degrees in Boise. We'll see a high of 87 degrees over in Mountain Home. 86 looking like the high over in Nampa and over in Caldwell, and 88 going to be the high over in Emmett. 87 looking like the high in Ontario, and then moving up to the mountains, 83 going to be the high in Idaho City. 75 over in Sun Valley, 76 going to be the high in McCall today. Thank you, Vasily. At 611 on your Friday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's take a look out there with Debbie McAllister at the drive this morning. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday. We have some extra traffic on Franklin 2026 headed towards the free freeway starting at Smead Parkway. And we're starting to see a little bit of traffic on Overland Road as you approach Eagle Road from Locust Grove. That's eastbound. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you get in the car, make sure you tune to News Talk KBOI at 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, auto workers are on strike. A look at the demonstrations already underway as they fail to reach a deal with automakers. Plus, Americans still unhappy with how much everything costs. The data that seems to suggest the economy is improving. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Studies have discovered that older people are much better than young people when it comes to doing this. Great guess is the answer though, keeping a secret. All right, now for today's question, a third of husbands don't remember this, but more than 80% of wives do. All right, folks, what is it? Is CBS 2 News this morning? It's 615 on your Friday. Welcome back. United Auto Workers are on strike this morning. No deal reached overnight with Detroit's big three, Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis. We are the union. We are the Auto workers asking for a four day work week, a 40% pay increase, and more. The strike starting at three factories a GM in Missouri, a Ford in Michigan, and a Stellantis in Ohio. And the union says more of its roughly 146,000 members could also walk off the job as the strikes continue. These companies got to come to the pump for, the, for their workers. They want to call them family when it's, when it's, when it's, when it's easy. But you know what? The proof's in the pudding. And you know what? They haven't been there. They haven't taken care of their workers. 
The union will be holding a mass rally in downtown Detroit later today. A simultaneous strike never happening before, but it has been brewing since the 2008 recession when union workers agreed to major concessions in their contracts to help keep the companies from filing for bankruptcy. And according to the Associated Press, Ford and GM, they've offered a 20% pay increase. Stellantis offering a 17% and a half increase. But Ford CEO says a four day work week isn't sustainable for his company. And if we had done that in our business, when we've had a couple of really great years here, we would have gone bankrupt many years ago. Ford adding its average annual pay, including overtime and bonuses, was $78,000 last year. And meantime, President Biden is in Maryland to talk about the economy and promote his Bidenomics agenda. While the job market is holding strong, inflation much lower than it was a year ago. Polls show, though, the American people aren't feeling it. Levels that we would normally associate with recessions, not with a 3.5 or 4% unemployment rate. So, so we know that there, there's something odd in the way the data is coming out. One explanation could be a drop in median household income. New census data showing 2022 marked a third straight year of decline, down 2.3% or about $1,700 when adjusted for inflation. And it comes as threats of a government shutdown. They're back in full force once again. Now, if some sort of deal isn't made by the end of this month, the government may have to close its doors. The White House wants Congress to pass a short-term measure while negotiations continue, but the GOP doesn't seem inclined to do that. Let's get through this budget debate. Let's get through the spending uh, the shutdown, which is going to happen, and then we'll see. The White House says Congress should move forward with the bipartisan agreement voted on and approved earlier on this year. A deal is a deal. They should keep their word and they should keep the government open. A government shutdown would start October 1st if a new bill isn't passed. Well, hey, take a look at this. Today is the day when Americans can double up on one of their favorite foods. It's National Double Cheeseburger Day. Look at that. Well, the hamburger sandwich appeared in the 19th or early 20th century. There's dispute over exactly where it happened. But there's no doubt that burger has become a culinary icon in the U.S. McDonald's getting in on the big day. They say they're offering 50 cent double cheeseburgers. But a heads up, you'll need to order them through the app. Oh, do I have pen and paper somewhere? I need to write that down. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good deal right there. Exactly. Want to help mm -hmm. people out, of mm -hmm. course. And uh, you're helping us out with getting the weather report because it's looking nice, folks, yeah, this weekend. Yeah, it's looking nice out there. I mean, if you do want to make your own burgers, it's going to be a perfect mm -hmm. day to get the grill out and just have a barbecue because we're going to be seeing clear skies not only here in the Treasure Valley, but all around the Gem State. Seeing a beautiful sunrise right now, both in the live picture of Sun Valley and of that live picture of Tamarack right now. Sun isn't quite risen over Boise this morning. We are going to see clear skies guys throughout the day today as high pressure settles into the region. Now this high pressure is going to warm up temperatures tomorrow and on Sunday as well. We'll see both of those high temperatures in the 90s and we'll also see some clear skies much like we're seeing this morning. These clear skies going to stick around throughout the day today. We'll see little to no clouds all around the gem state and then as we head into tomorrow we'll likely see those clear skies once again. We may see some light cloud cover in the afternoon near the Oahis but in general we're going to see those clear skies all day tomorrow and we got a game out on the blue tomorrow as well. That game starts Starting bright and early at 10 o'clock. Temperatures will be at 67 degrees, so you may want to bring a jacket for the start of the game. But as we head later and later, you're going to take that jacket off because temperatures are going to warm up to 90 degrees on Saturday. We'll see a high of 90 degrees on Sunday as well, but then we'll start to see partly cloudy skies rolling in. As we see a weak trough low pressure arrive on Monday, that'll drop temperatures to 87 degrees on Monday. And it'll drop, continue to drop temperatures down to 79 degrees on Tuesday. Now by Wednesday, that cold air is going to really start to settle in. We'll drop down into the low 70s on Wednesday for possibly dropping down into the upper 60s on Thursday. That's about 11 degrees below average for this time of year. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, their high temperature is going to be in the upper 70s both on Saturday and Sunday. We'll see partly cloudy skies for most of next week. Those high temperatures will drop down to 72 degrees on Monday, down to 66 degrees on Tuesday. They'll drop all the way down to 58 degrees on Wednesday, and they'll keep on dropping as they head into Thursday. They're looking at highs in the mid 50s on Thursday, and that low temperature on Thursday morning may drop right around freezing over in the mountains. Ooh, burr. All right, thank you, Vasily. Well, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's take a look out there with Debbie McAllister at The Drive this morning. Good morning. 
Well, we have a little bit of extra traffic on Overland Road eastbound between Locust Grove and just past Eagle Road. Congested traffic on Eagle Road already as well between Overland and Franklin. That's in both directions. And starting to see a little bit extra traffic on Garrity heading up to the freeway. It starts right about Kings Road. From News Talk KBY Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you get in the car, make sure you tune to News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, some finally heading back home to Maui. When families will be allowed to re-enter. Plus, planting trees to try to cool down cities. How much is being spent to make it happen? is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 624 on your Friday. Welcome back. Hurricane Lee, now a Category 1 storm as it's approaching New England. The National Hurricane Center says Lee expected to make landfall this weekend in either Maine or in the Canadian province of Nova Scotia. Tropical storm warnings. They're in effect for a wide stretch of the New England coast and Lee prompting a hurricane watch to be issued in Maine for the first time since 2008. And the death toll in Libya, more than 11,300. That number is for the city of Derna, where massive flooding hit. Two dams collapsing, heavy rains back on Sunday. The aid group, Libya Red Crescent, says more than 10,000 people are reported missing. Libya's United Nations ambassador saying he expects the death and missing toll to rise since the direct hit was at an area where around 30,000 people live. The ambassador also saying people in the area knew a storm was coming and had warnings, but nobody expected the magnitude or the flooding impacts from dams breaking. Well, for the first time since early August, residents in Maui are returning to the fire ravaged areas of Lahaina starting September 25th. County officials will begin escorting people to their properties, helping them look for lost heirlooms, but they stress that the timeline is fluid. It could easily change. The Islands Emergency Management Administration outlining the reentry plan, emphasizing the potential health risks when sifting through ash. We don't want people stirring it up, making it airborne, possibly exposing themselves to risk, but others in close proximity. So we'll be giving them guidance on how best to, as the EPA calls it, very gently moving through with a very gentle touch and removing what you need to remove to then look for those heirlooms or special things that you'd like to have. The EPA currently working to remove hazardous materials from that area. At least 115 people died in the fire. More than 2,000 buildings were destroyed, most, most of which were residential homes. Well, the Department of Agriculture contributing a billion dollars to plant seeds, trees in cities nationwide. The department announcing the funding for marginalized areas across all 50 states. It's coming from the Inflation Reduction Act. The grants meant to help reduce extreme heat, benefit health, and improve access to nature, making communities more livable. They've distributed over $200 million to states and territories benefiting from urban tree canopies so far. And still to come this morning, Ukraine says they're making progress in their counteroffensive. We have the latest. And don't forget about our question of the day. Here it is for you. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 630 on your Friday. Welcome back. President Biden's son, Hunter. He's been indicted on three gun charges. Now, if convicted, he faces up to 10 years behind bars. Our national correspondent, Christine Frizzau, bringing us up to speed. The charges stem from Hunter Biden's purchase of a firearm in October of 2018 and lying on the application about his drug use at the time. They come less than two months after he was set to plead guilty to two misdemeanor tax charges and enter into a pretrial diversion agreement to avoid prosecution on the felony gun charge. Now it's clear he won't avoid it. Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer calling the charges a very small start. Ironically, that's the one crime 
that he committed that you cannot tie Joe Biden into. Federal prosecutor, now special counsel David Weiss, brought the charges following Republican criticism of his new role. The indictment comes as Republicans in Congress are demanding the president's son be issued a subpoena as part of their investigation into his business dealings, a probe that this week led Speaker Kevin McCarthy to the decision to launch an impeachment inquiry into President Biden for his alleged role in those business dealings. Biden used his official office to coordinate with Hunter Biden's business partners about Hunter's role in Burisma, a Ukrainian energy company. Questions about business and finances, not part of this indictment, but central to the investigation in the House. We're following $20 million of money that flowed into shell companies created by Hunter Biden, uh, and currently we don't have the data of where that money got spent. Hunter Biden's attorney, Abby Lowell, responded to the indictment saying, Prosecutors filed charges today that they deemed were not warranted just six weeks ago following a five-year investigation into this case, criticizing, quote, MAGA Republicans' improper and partisan interference in this process. Many Democrats pointing out the three charges against Hunter Biden pale in comparison to the 91 charges former President Trump is facing. In Washington, I'm Christine Frazau. And the White House is pushing back against that impeachment inquiry, encouraging the media to be tough on impeachment claims. A White House spokesperson writing that, quote, it's time for media to ramp up its scrutiny of House Republicans for opening an impeachment inquiry based on lies. Well, now some are worried that letter may be aimed at affecting news coverage. This is the preview of working the refs, okay? And also, here's the thing. A memo like this should not necessarily have to come out because this, as a PR person, this is your job. Just last week, in a separate controversy, a court ruled the White House likely violated the First Amendment for trying to influence which posts about coronavirus social media companies should censor. Well, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky expected to meet with President Biden during the United Nations Assembly next week. Zelensky's visit coming as Congress is debating providing more funding in military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine in its war against Russia. Biden sought a package of $13 billion in military aid and $8 billion in humanitarian support. Conservative lawmakers have been pushing for spending cuts. They're looking to cut off funding for Ukraine in some cases. Zelensky last traveled to the U.S. back in December, addressing a joint session of Congress. It was his first time leaving Ukraine since the Russian invasion. And Ukraine says it's recaptured another village in its ongoing counteroffensive. Ukrainian officials saying the village it reclaimed is about six miles south of the Russian-occupied city of Bakhmut. Bakhmut has been the longest battle in Russia's ongoing invasion. Ukraine launching its counteroffensive more than three months ago. Authorities say Ukraine has regained around 19 square miles of land around Bakhmut since it started. Well, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un continuing his visit in Russia this morning. North Korean state media says Kim toured a Russian manufacturing plant that develops and builds warplanes. Images released showing Kim looking inside a fighter jet. Kim reportedly set to travel to see Russia's Pacific Ocean Fleet and other facilities. This is the North Korea's leader's first foreign trip since 2019. And the U.S. is slapping another round of sanctions on more than 150 businesses and people helping maintain Russia's war in Ukraine. It's one of the biggest sanction packages by state and treasury departments so far. They're meant to crack down on workarounds that have allowed Russia to access both technology and money. The sanctions also target Russia's energy sector and its ability to develop more natural gas and mining projects. We have not wanted to, to take Russian oil off the market because of the impact that that could have on energy prices worldwide and the impact it would have energy, on energy prices uh, for American consumers. We have taken steps to ensure that while the Russian oil remains available, the price that they're receiving for it and the profits that they receive for it are greatly diminished. Russia expelled two U.S. diplomats yesterday. The State Department saying they were simply doing their jobs. The U.S. vowing to respond to these actions swiftly, but wouldn't preview any countermeasures. Well, back here in the West, a suspect stole a Portland fire and rescue boat and commandeered it down the Columbia River. Take a look. 
The suspected the suspect rather sailed 40 miles down to Kalama, Washington. That's where he abandoned the boat and made a run for it. But a neighbor tuning into our Sinclair sister station in Portland spotted that stolen boat out his front window. We've seen plenty of boats stuck on the sandbars out here, but never anything that's a stolen fireboat. Mike Warner called it in. Shortly after that, the suspect was arrested. Fire officials say he snuck into a, the garage of a boathouse, got into the boat and took it for a joyride. The stolen boat's propeller and depth finder are damaged and will need to be replaced. Oh, geez. All right, well, here at home, Caldwell Police need your help. Take a good look at your screen. They want these two men for some car burglaries they say happened on Monday. If you know them, think they look familiar or know anything about them, call Crime Stoppers or Canyon County Dispatch. Well, come November, Ada County voters will get to choose to expand the Ada County Jail or not. Commissioners unanimously approving a bond to go on the ballot. The total cost of the bond is $49 million. That comes out to $13 for every $100,000 of taxable assessed value each year. Since the last expansion, the population's grown by a third, and they tell us the jail has only about 100 open beds on average. Well, hey, in Caldwell, to help keep kids from ending up in jail, the Youth Resource and Opportunity Collaborative, or Youth Rock, now open. It's for kids 10 to 17. Youth Rock's goals are to prevent early intervention services, help kids find jobs and stay out of crisis, avoid law enforcement involvement, and build strong emotional foundations for a successful future. And it's thanks to $1.5 million in grants from the Idaho Department of Juvenile Corrections. The program is free to the public. You can go to youthrockidaho.org or our website to learn more. And looking ahead to next Saturday, that's the 23rd, the family of a woman who's been missing for 29 years now, they'll search an area of Boise and you can show up to help. Kristen Dunlap was last seen in 1994. Her mother last seeing her that year on October 6th. Her friends say they were in contact through December. She was 17 at the time. She'd be 46 now. The upcoming search will cover areas where Boise police cold case detectives searched twice back in 2022. They didn't find any remains. No new information is available since that search, but BPD wants to support Kristen's family and they hope you will too by helping in the search. Police first considering Kristen a runaway, then in 1998 missing, then in 2021 likely dead. Detectives think someone is responsible for her death. Here's her half-brother describing her to CBS2 at a vigil back in January of last year. She was a, just a really Genuine person, very nice, uh, smart, very smart, very funny, um, happy, to, happy, go lucky, great to be around, and always up for an adventure and be silly and goof off, and and just a really good, down to earth type of person. This is still an open case. Please think someone knows what happened to her. If that's you, reach out to Crime Stoppers. You can remain anonymous. There is a thousand dollar reward. Well, switching gears, folks, it's set to be a sunny day here in the Treasure Valley. Temperatures are going to be quite warm as well. We're warming into the upper 80s today. We are going to be in the low 60s around 9 a.m., jumping into the low 70s around 11 o'clock, leading to our high today of 87 degrees in Boise. Expected to arrive at around 5 p.m. And if you're heading out the door right now, we're sitting at 59 degrees here in Boise. However, it is chilly around most of the Treasure Valley. We're sitting in the upper 40s right now in Ontario, Caldwell, and over in Mountain Home in 52, the temperature right now over in Nampa. We're going to see a slow warming trend over the next next three days. Temperatures are going to jump up into the 90s on both Saturday and Sunday and expect this sunshine to stick around through the weekend, but we are going to get much cooler next week. We are going to see multiple troughs of low pressure moving through the region that's going to drag some cooler air from the Gulf of Alaska down into our neck of the woods, and it's also going to push temperatures below average, not only for us here in the Treasure Valley, but all around the West Coast. We'll see below average temperatures over the next 8 to 14 days. It also may bring us some precipitation as well. We're looking at dry conditions through Tuesday morning, and then we 
may see a spotty shower or two on Tuesday, but Wednesday night into Thursday morning is where we're looking at some scattered showers here in the Treasure Valley. Now, as for the rest of this morning, we are going to see those clear skies. Temperatures are going to drop to 57 degrees at 7 a.m. Then we'll drop down to 56 degrees around 8 a.m., which is looking like our low this morning. Our high today is going to be 87 degrees. 87 also going to be the high over in Mountain Home and 86 looking like the high over in Nampa and over in Caldwell. 88 going to be the high over in Emmett and 87 looking like the high in Ontario. Then moving up to the mountains, 83 in Idaho City. 75 going to be the high in Sun Valley and 76 looking like the high in McCall. We'll jump up into the 90s on Saturday and Sunday before dropping back into the upper 80s on Monday. Then we'll drop a low average on Tuesday and we'll keep dropping as we head into Wednesday and Thursday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. It's 640 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to Debbie McAllister with a look at your morning drive. Good morning. We are starting to see some heavier traffic on Karcher heading over to the freeway starting at Midway Road. North side is busy heading up to the freeway and so is Garrity. Garrity's getting slow before you get to Stam Lane. And we also have some heavy traffic on Eagle Road between Overland Road and Franklin Road and that's in both directions. From Newstalk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you get in the car, make sure you tune to News Talk KBOI. That's 6.70 a.m. or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And hey, it's our favorite time of the day. It's time for our question of the day. The question, a third of husbands don't remember this, but more than 80% of wives do. We got some good answers in the first hour. Mm -hmm. our you going to settle on your guess from the first hour? Or? I, I think it has to be first kiss. First that's, kiss? That's okay, my I'm going to go with first date, I think. Yep. But all right, let's see what the viewers have to say. All right, let's see. Kimberly says the children's birthday. <laughs> well, it's possible. Yeah, it's a great guess, Kimberly. Oh, my gosh, I love that. What if you don't, both don't know? All right. <laughs> Donna says the day they met. Uh, another good one there, too. Good ones. All right, let's see what we have. Alana says her anniversary. <laughs> it just happens to be mine. Oh, happy anniversary, oh, happy Alana. Happy anniversary, Alana. Yeah, to you and yours. Awesome. All right. If you think you know the answer, of course, you can still guess for another 15 minutes and we'll reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS this morning. Love that. All right, still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, some new technology may help give you a lift without the need for surgery. is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 6.45 on your Friday. Welcome back. It's National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. And adults with disabilities, they're three times more likely to consider suicide than people without disabilities. That's the latest data from the CDC. Now, Dr. Lauren Kazem says the disability community is bigger than what most people think, accounting for a quarter of the U.S. population. Most research efforts are focused on finding cures or preventing disabilities from happening. But Kazem says there needs to be a focus on suicide as well because of perceived burdensomeness. Well, hey, the University of Idaho is also focusing on suicide prevention all week. Tomorrow, they have a 2K and a 5K. It's a run or walk for suicide awareness. It starts at 10 a.m. at the Student Rec Center. And we want to remind you that there's always help. If you or someone you know is hurting, please reach out. You can call or text 988 for help anytime. Well, hey, new technology is on the market that could help you look younger. As medical reporter Liz Bonus explains, it sort of exercises your skin. Take a look. Hey there, everybody. It's the newest technology to lift your face without surgery. After just a few treatments of this exercise for your face, your skin can go from this to this. It kind of looks like a bunch of pads strapped to your face. Chris, our patient, is hooked up to what's called the M-Face system. You'll see her face involuntarily twitch here. Facial plastic surgeon Dr. John Mendelson says it uses high-intensity focused electromagnetic energy to help stimulate the muscles of the face for a lifting result. It also uses synchronized radio frequency to give results that look like this after several treatments with improved skin and texture to reduced wrinkles. What it's doing is it's stimulating the, her facial muscles to lift and tighten, and it's also warming the tissue. The radio frequency heats up the tissue a little bit. It feels like it is uh, tickling you from the inside. It's a very weird sensation. It's a 20 minute treatment, and uh, there are four of them. It's usually done uh, every week uh, for a series of four treatments. 
So what does that feel like? Can you ask her? Kind of like something crawling across your face. So it's more of just kind of like a twitching. Now, company research says the results last about a year, but you may want to touch up about six months out. Cost about $750 a treatment, and in most cases, it is not covered by your medical insurance plan. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Back to you. Well, hey, take a look at this. A new study in the Journal of Geophysical Research Planets. They found a spacecraft that was left by the U.S. on the moon's surface back in 1972. It could be causing moonquakes. Now, the Apollo 17 lunar lander module, sitting a few hundred yards away from instruments that are recording those small tremors. The analysis offering new insights into how the moon responds to its surrounding and what can affect its seismic activities. The rumbles, not dangerous and unlikely to be detected by a human standing on the moon's surface. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seems like we've learned more and more <laughs> about the moon every day. Yes, that's very true. Mm -hmm. And of course, back here on Earth, it's shaping up to be a beautiful weekend. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful weekend here in the Treasure Valley. Temperature is going to jump up into the 90s, both on Saturday and Sunday. And as we take a look outside this morning, we're seeing some clear skies over Boise. We're also seeing those clear skies all around the Gem State as the sun starts to rise in that live picture. Actually, just updating over in Bogus Basin right now. We're seeing that sun rising all around the Gem State. Beautiful sunrise in that live picture of the the Boise Mountains this morning and we're seeing these clear skies thanks to this high pressure that's currently moving into the region right now. Now as this high pressure builds, it is going to heat up temperatures right now. We're in the upper 80s and we're going to jump into the 90s both on Saturday and on Sunday. And we're looking at clear skies pretty much all weekend. We'll see little to no cloud cover throughout the day today, not only here in the Treasure Valley, but all around the Gem State. And then as we head into tomorrow, we'll see much of the same. We might see some light clouds over in the Elihis as we head into tomorrow afternoon, but in general, we'll see that sunshine as we head into Sunday. And we got a game out on the blue on Saturday. They start bright and early at 10 o'clock. Temperatures are going to be at 67 degrees. We should see some clear skies throughout the game tomorrow, but you may want to bring a jacket for the start of the game. We should start to warm up as temperatures warm to 90 degrees in the afternoon. Tomorrow we'll see high 90 degrees on Sunday as well. But then we'll start to see those temperatures drop as we head into next week. We'll see a high 79 degrees on Tuesday. That is below average for this time of year. And we'll keep on dropping as we head into Wednesday and Thursday. We'll see a high 72 degrees on Wednesday and we'll be in the upper 60s on Thursday. That's about 11 degrees below average for this time of year. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, their high temperatures in the mid 70s today. They'll jump into the upper 70s on both Saturday and on Sunday. But then as they head into next week, they're looking at partly cloudy skies pretty much all week. They'll see high 72 degrees on Monday. They'll drop to 66 on Tuesday. And they'll drop all the way down to 56 degrees on Thursday. And those temperatures, those low temperatures are going to drop right around freezing on Thursday morning in the mountains. Oh, all right, they'll be ready. Thank you, Vasily. It's 650 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and Newstalk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. Let's take a look out there with Debbie McAllister on your morning drive. Good morning. Heavy traffic on Karcher heading over to the Boulevard starts at Middleton Road and Garrity is quite busy between Kings Road and Stam Lane. And it looks like we are moving at regular speeds on the eastbound lanes of the freeway, so not too bad as you're starting your Friday. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you get in the car, make sure you tune to News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And coming up on CBS 2 News, Boise State kicking off their next home game tomorrow. A look at what to expect as they try to avoid going 0-3. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 654 on your Friday. Welcome back. Happening today, if you have old paint or cell phones you want to get rid of, Pickles Butte Landfill hosting a free hazardous waste disposal event. It's happening in the parking lot of the Napa Ford Idaho Center. It's at 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. They're also accepting cleaning products, indoor pesticides, computers, and household batteries. It's free if you live in Canyon County. And there's a fun event happening here in Boise. People across the city turning temporary, temporarily turning curbside parking spots into small public parks. It's all for National Parking Day. City staff is located on the south side of Bannock Street. They're in front of Cup Bop. They'll have snacks, games, and information about city projects. The fun starts at 10 a.m. and goes till 2 p.m. 
And today marks the start of the sixth National Adoption Weekend. If you're looking to add one or more furry friends to your family, Simply Cats offering a deal starting today. It's buy one, get one on free on kitten adoption fees. It's a partnership with Best Friends Animal Society. Simply Cats hoping to make more room. They're a no-kill shelter and they're full. They do have appointments and that's how you can do or that's how you can see some of their pets. Of course, you can go to our website for an application or to schedule a meetup. And kickoff at Albertson Stadium is tomorrow. The Broncos have an 0 2 record so far this season. So going into game day, here's what you need to know. Vendors will be out bright and early. There's tailgating before the sun even comes up. Kickoff at 10 a.m. Boise State asking fans to wear throwback white gear. So if you have some, make sure to bring it out this Saturday. The team revealing its uniforms, blue jerseys with white pants. And also happening tomorrow, we have $596 million up for grabs. That's the current prize for the Powerball. After its latest drawing went without a winner, the one-time cash payout option would be worth around $288 million. If you want to buy a ticket, do so before the next drawing. That's on Saturday night, so the clock is ticking. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> All right, it's time for our question of the day. And that question is, one-third of husbands don't remember this, but more than 80% of wives do. What's the answer? The answer is the date of their first date. You got oh, it right. Yeah, that's that good. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I mean, first date, kind of long time ago. People yeah. forget it. Yeah. I was going to say, all right, it's a great Friday. Our next newscast coming up at 11. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. And watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.